I argue. Like I said to Steve before the show, I, 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 I'm, I'm not well, but I will go along for you guys today if we need to. So, but uh, Operation Israel was um, historic in so many ways. It was the, the, the largest number of people. I was one of the original people who came together in a non-IRC. Actually, it's another butterfly moment. We didn't come together. We were already together in an IRC. There was a group of us. Uh, sitting around in IRC telling glory stories, telling battle stories to the newbies, um, which is something that I guess when you're an old warrior, that's something that's inevitable you do. And I was participating and we had a channel with a lot of new, uh, new bros, as they call them, new sisses uh, in the channel. And we were sitting around like old warriors do, uh, boasting about our glory days a whole fucking two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and in, into the IRC came this uh, Palestinian kid. He was a 15, he turned out later, we found out he was a 15 year old Palestinian kid. And he said, hey, you guys, uh, do, do you got a moment? Can I, can I talk to you guys? And we're like, sure, go ahead, say your piece, kid. And he said, well, the Israeli government just threatened to turn the internet off in, in Palestine, in Gaza Strip. And we're like, well, you know what? Picks or it didn't happen, kid. You know, how did they do this? Well, they dropped flyers. Well, do you got a picture of the flyer? In literally seconds, the kid uploaded a picture of the flyer and we all took a look. And I think it was the fastest agreement consensus that we ever had amongst old time and ons to start an op. It was literally like, okay, let, let's do this. And I think it took less than an hour from the time that that kid came into the chat and and asked for our help, asked for Anonymous' help. And he had been led there. He'd been told to go there by other Palestinians who said, look, Anonymous might help us with this. And he took a, he took a, he took a, a Hail Mary. He jumped into a random IRC, just happened to be one with a bunch of OGs sitting around, again, telling war stories, you know. And um, he just got lucky that night. Within less than an hour, we had the Twitter set up for Op Israel, which persists to this day. You can look it up. Um, we had a website set up, and we had a press release written and disseminated to the media, who at the time were our babies. Um, they, they literally would print anything we told them to print mainstream media. So we were in our glory in that sense. And literally in less than an hour, um, Op Israel was born. And it grew... In, in, in an exponential way that cannot even be described. It was literally terrifying. I literally, I was in New Brunswick at the time and we were having snowstorm after snowstorm, these horrible snowstorms. And I'll never forget looking out of my friend's window where we were running this off from his fucking living room and looking out of his window, waiting for the fucking laser beam to hit me in the forehead from a Mossad agent to come assassinate us. Uh, we, we, had, we had our ISP, came in the middle of the night to make sure our internet was working. And we were certain that that was not a fucking random visit to make sure our internet was working. They were sent there, you know, they, they, we were terrified. We were fucking terrified of what we had unleashed and against whom we had unleashed it. But to, but to, but to, make, to make a long story short, and again, I encourage people to read the chapter on Op Israel. It's fascinating. There were lots of, of spine tingling moments and really heart wrenching moments when the Palestinians really realized that they had somebody on their side. They were very empowered by it. But to make a long story short, um, we we uh, we stopped an army, guys, and and to my mind, there are a lot of pivotal moments in hacktivism, but I had always believed that information could stop bullets, and it, but it's easy to say that kind of rhetoric. It's easy to talk about that as a philosophy, but to actually see it in action, you know, Israel stopped that 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 operation against Gaza, and they had said just a few days before that they were going to continue it indefinitely. We don't know how long they were going to continue it past that point. Maybe we saved the, the Palestinians only one day, but guess what? People were dying every day. Civilians were being killed every day. So even if we only stop that conflict, stop that army from bombing them by one day, and I think it was probably more than that. I think it was probably more than that. We'll never know exactly how, how long they can, they intended to continue. But even if it was only by one day, nevertheless, we did something that no other hacktivists, no other activists in history had ever done. We stopped the world's most powerful, most lethal army in its tracks using nothing 
but ones and zeros using nothing but our laptops. A bunch of people spread out all over the world on fucking radio computers and laptops operating out of coffee houses, my friend's living room, uh, college flop houses. By the end of that, we had perpetrated on Israel cyberspace over 75,000 discrete hacks that cost the Israeli economy in two weeks, cost the Israeli economy three billion USD. Which and ironically is correct. about 800,000 shy of what the U.S. gives Israel every year now. Every year. And